Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. This is my main man, Do. I'm the one and only big game dame. Not a lot of positive to talk about this week in the world of Philadelphia. So let's get right into it. This is fresh. We're recording this fresh off of that Monday night. I don't even know if you can call it a game. As much as an undressing. As much as a good old-fashioned drubbing. Um, Let's start off because I think this game was all about the coach and the quarterback. The coaching staff and the quarterback. Your overall impressions. Let's start right there with the coaching staff and the quarterback. The lights were too bright. The lights were too bright. The lights were too bright. They weren't ready for a Monday night in Dallas in that atmosphere. And they were in awe. I I honestly don't believe the coach. I don't think he realized he only ran the ball three times. Yeah, it was that, like, that that's how much in awe like, of this the situation I think where like at one point wasn't it like two carries for twenty four yards? Yeah. Um, twenty four yards a pop. And and, yeah. and and you see this all the time, you know, young team. You know, might be feeling themselves a little bit. You know, they get in that big spot and it's just like, oh. And then things don't go your way early on and it it just snowballs. And it's just like, you just want to get off. You know, all of America is watching, your colleagues, and you just want to get out of there. Okay. So, yeah. Let's get specific and talk about Jalen Hurts. Okay. Okay. So. Um, I, I can't. I gotta be honest. He 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 was almost brutal. It, it, it was, was it, it was hard to watch. Now here's what I will say in his defense, and it's something that we talked about over the last several weeks, and that's the offensive line. <clears throat> now he's lost three of his starting offensive linemen, and it's gonna make it a little bit harder to evaluate him. But from what I watched on on Monday, it looked like he was um, he was pressing. Ball placement was bad. It was terrible. Um, it, like I said, it, it, he looked like a Darren Headlights. He looked like the stage was just too big. And once again, I'm going to keep saying this. Like, the brain is there. And this is where I'm hearing some criticism this week. It's I keep hearing his arm might not be good enough to get the ball where he needs to. Um, or just the ball play, like ball placement. Ball pa- placement can be corrected. But if it's an issue of his arms where, like, let's say that deep throw, mm-hmm. um, like he, uh, early in the game that just did not get there, it was picked off. Like, if that's the case, then, you know, you got these first round picks next year. I mean, listen, up to the, up until now, it's a fair question. You know, he's, um, he's underthrown a couple of deep balls. He doesn't just, you know, get it out there. So I think it's fair to question his arm strength. Um, I think it's fair to question his accuracy. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to panic. Cause like we said, this season is just about evaluating and watching, but for the first time, I think you saw some things that, you know, make you pause. Like, uh, Oh, the thing for me was, and the offense, I'm, I'm kind of with you there. That defense got beat up from start to finish. Like I'm talking about, and this is this is when I knew they were going to lose in the first quarter. When I saw how physical Dallas was, mm-hmm. and I saw it with the exception of Hargrave, that physicality was not being matched. Okay. Shout they, out to yeah, shout out to Hargrave. Yeah, he he, he, he was he one balled. of the only two players that show up. We can mention another guy later. But um, see, I, I take a different approach to it. I thought the the scheme was bad. I, I thought the game plan was bad, and I didn't think that they really adjusted until like midway through the third quarter, and by that time. You know, it's too late. I, I, they did get dominant. I'm not disputing that. Dallas was definitely the more physical team, but I just felt like the Eagles just like played back. Like they played too soft all game. And if you're playing that type of, if that's your game plan, then I think it's hard to be aggressive. So let me ask you this: Do you think Gannon gave that Cowboys offense a little bit too much respect? I do. I, I think he treated it as if they would get impatient and wouldn't stick to the game plan. And I just think now that we see, like, the personnel, you know, that we see, it might not be, you know, those linebackers we talked about, they they were exposed. Like, those linebackers yeah, and were And Parsons was right there. But brutal. The, um, who I would personally would have took Parsons. The, the backup man. safety who had to come in early in the game, he was just getting picked on. So I think it was also a, a, a talent issue also. Yeah. Here's my thing, and this is why I don't, like, because Hargrave stood out so much mm-hmm. 
and you see every play that was made was because anything positive that happens so far this season, even the first game, mm -hmm. is because there are players with talent on this team. Now, my issue is that coaching staff, and this is Jeff Lurie. This falls on Jeff Lurie. When you bring in an entire coaching staff that's completely green and you have a quarterback that's completely green, like what do you expect when you're going against – that situation <clears throat> and, and and i get it too and i'm not a fan of coaches that like to play mostly zone i'm more of a i like to see aggressive attacking defenses and they have the cornerbacks to play a more aggressive style that that's what's confusing to me like you can put slay on somebody and have them follow them or shut off one side of the field and and be more aggressive and, and i was waiting for that all game like okay they're just slowly, methodically beating you down the field. Yeah. Let's let's change it. Let's go at it. Let's go get them. You know, maybe they'll make a mistake or anything. And yeah. it's just like they just and, they, they were just afraid. Like we're just going to sit back and we're just going to try to keep them out the end zone. And it looked to me like they're still in assistant mode, okay. like mentally. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at it, they, the Cowboys are an established veteran team at this point. OK, and you look at what the Eagles were doing, you look at the strategy that came in there and that they, their strategy has been criticized greatly and rightfully so. It looked to me and I don't know if you agree or disagree as if, OK, this is a, a group of people who are still getting used to being an offensive coordinator, getting used to be defensive coordinator and a young quarterback who's like just Dallas confused the hell out of him. Yeah, and you can see how, you know. That that stage was a little too much for them. They they weren't ready. So I'm not gonna um, kill them because, yeah. like I said, we evaluating and like I said, this is their first time going through it. So it, there there will be growing pains. I think we got to see you know two, three, four weeks from now how do they play. Yeah, and at least things will ease up because they have Kansas City and Tampa Bay next. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's gonna get. It's sunny in Philadelphia. Evaluating, folks. evaluating. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Speaking of, <sighs> last week, it official. It became official. No more rumors. Our boy Glenn Rivers came on national TV, had himself on national TV, talked about Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons wants out. He's we've everything's being confirmed. All of these rumors. He's telling the team this is a wrap. They there was supposed to be a players only meeting that he told everybody it was like it's going to be in LA. He's like, don't even waste your time. Don't even waste your time. What do you think? Let's start with Glenn Rivers. Just your assessment of Glenn Rivers right now. What he said, and honestly, where do you think as a head coach in his position with the 76ers? Period. Like, is this the guy? Just because I have some questions after that interview, honestly. Um, I think a lot of people do. I think a lot of people thought it was maybe kind of soft the way he handled this. Like, now here we go with the kid gloves with, with Ben again. And honestly, I looked at it a little bit differently. I thought this was a strategic move to try to get his trade value back up. I think this is they're getting terrible offers for him. And that's because teams seem to think that you got to move him. So now... If you change the narrative to, no, we, we have no problem with bringing him back. If he wants to sit out, he can sit out. And I think this is more for the teams around the league to sit there and say, we're not going to give him up for pennies on the dollar. We'll sit there. We'll, we'll blow the season. But we're not giving him away. And I looked at like this is what they had to do to try to get his value back up. Because the to look at it the other way, to me, it's like, well, we said that we was handling with kid gloves, and that was part of the problem. So then you can't come back and then handle them with kid gloves. So that's why I thought, like, this was strategic just to try to get that trade value back up. Yeah, and they know it's over. Um, mm -hmm. Just even when um, uh, media day for um, camp, and Embiid made his comments mm -hmm. about, you know, Ben – he needs to look at the film. <laughs> you know, that's the issue is he needs to look at the film. They know it's over. They know. Yeah. But it comes down to, and I actually agree with you, I think that was a strategy. Mm -hmm. But just listen to Doc speak. I just don't. I don't say it. Now, listen, him as a head coach, I think that's a different issue. I wasn't a big fan of the hire, but I understood the hire. Um, listen. I'm I'm okay with him as the head coach, and unless you tell me what the alternative is, who do you have in mind? And 
players seem to like him and gravitate towards him. You know, he's a good. He he gets the best out of his players. Like they yeah. like to play for him. So yeah, my main yeah. criticism is Glenn. I'm not calling you Doc until you actually do something. No <laughs> more. But it's like, look, here's my main criticism, Glenn. Okay. There is a difference between a regular season bench and a playoff bench. If you would have realized that, maybe the Sixers would have got to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, his, his rotation was horrible. I, I was saying even in the Wizards series, like, this is going to come back to haunt him. Like, championship teams go seven deep, maybe eight if you, you know, if you have to. But like I said, it was his first year here, and I give him the benefit of the doubt, learning the players, learning everything. So I think this year we can look at him with a, a more critical eye. Yeah, and people were asking um, him this week, well, why do you think Ben Simmons wants out? And, you know, he's like, oh, well, you know, it's tough to play here. Where I'm like, dude, all you got to do is say, ask Ben. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, why does it even, why does the Philadelphia thing even come into it? It's like, like the fans have been supportive of Ben. I think Ben Simmons would say that, that generally speaking, nice. the fans have had his back. Absolutely. You know, there's a couple of outliers, but this time, his tenure here, and from what I've heard, mm -hmm. his issue is not with the fans here. His issue is with the team. And th the problem at the end of the day is he just comes off as having no self-awareness. You know, he, he wants to deflect and point the blame elsewhere. He doesn't want to take responsibility for the role that he played in the position that he's in now. Yeah. And the one thing I got to ask myself, you know, and I heard a couple analysts say this, like, even if he does go somewhere else, if I'm that team right now, why wouldn't I think that this he can do this to us if he's not getting his way? Yeah. You know, but so. you're going to ask him to shoot. That's the NBA now. Mm -hmm. That's it's. I keep going back to this, where it's like, dude, you cannot hide anywhere. Yeah. There's nowhere to hide. You can play that song from the Warriors. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Like, there's nothing he can do. Where is he going to go? He keeps thinking Golden State. Can you imagine him with Draymond Green? <laughs> no, hey, Ben. I, hey, Ben. Yo, Ben. Ben, but what's up with that? What's up with that? You ain't going to shoot? Like, a, this is the NBA. You got to shoot. He wants to get his behind in the backcourt. What, what does he think? Listen. Eric Snow. <laughs> Eric freaking Snow got himself an ugly little jump shot. Jason Kidd, Mark Jackson, you got I mean, to. Hey, listen, but they pampered him and they took care of him and they didn't care about him shooting. So I, I think, like, when we talk about this, you know, let's not absolve the Sixers for oh, the, I completely this don't. problem also. You know, they have to take their, their part of the blame and create in this problem. But, I mean, ultimately it comes down to Ben because I say, listen, if you want to be elite, which I would hope that's the goal, you know, you got to look in the mirror and know that you have holes in your game. Yeah. And if you're not willing to fix those holes, then what you're saying is you're okay with where you're at and, you know, you're you're fine and you'll just coast. Mm -hmm. And this is the mm -hmm. thing I would ask Ben. I'm like, what other NBA superstar would be doing this right now? Yeah, and it's not like he plays on a bad team. I can see, like, you know, the Sixers was, you know, tanking. And, no, this, this is a team that, you know – legitimately you know they might not be the one of the favorites but they're probably on that next tier of you know a team that you squint hard enough they, they yeah. could win it and if he actually did go to the wizard like we talked about um mm -hmm. you know what happened in milwaukee mm -hmm. you know maybe if he did go to the wizard you know that takes the sixers to that next gear if he becomes more of a complete player but he's good mm -hmm. he's been pampering and coddled his all his whole life Ben Simmons thinks he's better than he really is. If he was as good as he thinks he is, he would actually be a superstar. He's a nice player. He's an, uh, there's a difference between an all-star and a superstar. Ben Simmons is an all-star player, barely. Okay? He's, he's tieable. He's, he's basically tieable, a, more, a better version of tieable. Yeah, that's the hurt talking. <laughs> her talking, that's the honesty talking. The NBA, the game has changed. The game's changed. Listen, it's the European game. Now. I mean, I get it, but the man, he is talented. He and you can't take that away from him. He he can do things on a court that on a, a high level that a lot of players in the NBA can't do. So I'm not going to sit there and say like you know, you know, he he he's a thievable, but he 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 just has a major flaw. And if, the, if he fixes that major flaw, we all feel as though he's an MVP candidate. He is, but he's, you have to be a complete player. 
Right. Great players are complete players. But and he gets paid like he's a great complete player. And he thinks he's a great he's a great player. You get to go to Wimbledon with these little Instagram thingies and these little I'm not gonna say what my mom would call them, these individuals that he's, you know you know, that he hangs out with. You no, know, he likes the mansions and the fancy things and going through Cherry Hill, going hundred miles an hour. I saw you next to the Cherry Hill Mall driving hundred miles an hour in his Ferrari. You know, look, everyone, I'm driving 100 miles an hour in a Ferrari and the cops won't pull me over. You know, that nonsense. That's what he enjoys. God forbid you actually enjoy, like, busting somebody and putting the work in. You know, he always puts on Twitter. I'm sorry, I'm going on a rant. The little hoof, the little hoof, like, face. It's like, child, please, to quote Chad Johnson. Like, you don't got, well, ain't no dog in you. There's mutt in you, but there ain't no dog. Kick rocks. That's what I'm saying. The Sixers got to have a kick rock strategy. All right, Ben. Okay, we've heard your concerns. Now you can go kick rocks. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it's a lost <laughs> cause anyway. They're not going to win. The way they're put together, they're not going to win. That's what I, I'm convinced of that. No one can convince me otherwise. Even if he was here, his team's not winning because he's here. Okay, I'm gonna let you have that take. All right. Okay. All right. I'm being honest. I gotta, as the kids were saying, I gotta keep it a bean. I gotta keep it a bean. You know? uh, All right. Before we get out of here, any closing thoughts on the week in sports? It is something that caught my eye. And speaking of having no heart, we made Super Bowl predictions, right? And yeah. I would not pull the trigger on the Ravens because of the running back situation. So this week, of course, their field goal kicker kicks a 66-yard field goal <laughs> yeah. to win the game. And it reminded me, 2017, Eagles-Giants. Oh, the yeah. Eagles kicked a 58-yard field goal to win in week three. And yeah, we did not know it at that time that – this was going to be a Super Bowl season. And in a Super Bowl season, there's always something crazy that happens when you look back and be like, man, that was the yeah, start and of that it. was the game. That and the yeah. Carolina game were the games that gave them that momentum. Yeah, so like to me, it's just like, oh, I wish I would have stuck in there and, and made my and stuck with the Ravens. But uh, shout out to Tucker making a 66-yard field goal. I noticed it. Yeah, too. And I noticed you were playing Detroit, too. So. <laughs> Come the on, 66. Luck. Come this on, is bad man. luck schlep rocks of the NFL. That's my obscure reference for this week. They're the bad luck schlep rocks of the NFL. Googling. Okay. Uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam show. <laughs> Google that. Yeah. I mean, so it did come against Detroit, and they just can't get a break. No. But, yeah, that was something else. Yeah. That was something else. Um, you might be right. You might be <laughs> right. You get together, you get that little bit of heart going. Kansas City's got their issues. Yeah, so, like. You know, the AFC might be a little bit more wide open than we think. Yeah, so, like, I'm, I'm kicking myself that I didn't just stick with my first choice. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I don't disagree with you at all. We'll say, you know, I don't like the Ravens because I don't like people from Baltimore. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They're cool. They're cool. They're cool. Not really. But all right. <laughs> I'm joking. So that's going to be it for this week. Okay. Okay. I'm a big Baltimore fan. Shout out the wire. <laughs> yeah, I like the, uh, I like the, uh, the seafood. There you go. No, I just had to get your hard time with that one. No. <laughs> I like Lamar too. That's my man. All right. So, all right. Enough playing around. Next week, Kansas City coming off of a loss. Um, Big Red. You might want to hide the wife and children for this one. <laughs> like, I know the last few weeks we thought, like, you know what? They got a chance. They don't have no chance this week. All right. So maybe <laughs> we got to do, like, college football. Can they stay within 30? <laughs> Yeah, that's there within 30. They, can they stay within 30? Yeah, this is one where you just just evaluate. I would tell people, look at a position and pick a player and say, you know what? I'm going to watch that player this game. I'm going to evaluate. I'm going to watch that player get hurt because he plays with the Philadelphia hey, Eagles. And that's what they so, do. You know I mean? And then you say, you know what? The goal is to get where that other team is yeah. at. <laughs> I think Eagles fans, all kidding aside, I think Eagles fans, if they give – Kansas City a good fight if they're competitive if the offense is doing it if Hurts is making good decisions if his ball placement improves mm -hmm. I think you want to look for improvement and a good fight okay don't expect no W's mm -hmm. but that's what you want to look for you want to look for the improvement from the quarterback you want to see how they recover from such an embarrassment Okay. That's I think that's a good thing to look for you know show a little character especially at defense because they got punched in the mouth the entire game 
you know. So I think that's what Eagles fans should look for. Okay. Uh, good luck. <laughs> I'm just begging for improvement for these next two weeks. <laughs> it's gonna that's be hard a- with 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 the type of firepower they have. Like, um, if it doesn't look the way that we expect, you know, I think you're great on the curve because they they about to play a great team. Yeah, you know? that's that's why I say if they give them a fight, I'll be. I'll be more than satisfied. A great and team that's angry. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Like I said, if they, they just hang in there, hang in there, camps, yeah. you know, they, they will, uh, we might be bad luck, Schlepp Rock. I'm making fun of the Lions. <sighs> Tough days ahead. Okay, so that's <laughs> it. That is going to be it for this week from a man, do a very solemn, solemn Philadelphia sports week. I'm the one and only big game dame. Who knows? We might get pleasantly surprised. A couple fumbles, a couple turnovers. It's not going to happen, but who knows? We will see you next week, but please follow us on all social media platforms. Till next week, go birds!